Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy, Chris. And I have a question for you. Have you ever been to a circus? If so, you may have seen trapeze artists, also known as people being tossed in the air. The artists must trust that their partner will catch them. They have to put their confidence in someone they can depend on. Now, that's nothing I would ever do, but I would call that the ultimate trust exercise. Listen, our September memory verse is Proverbs 3 and 5, and it reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Let's make that personal and repeat this after me. I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. I do not depend on my own understanding. God didn't create us to do life without his help. He wants us to trust him for everything. Here's this week's bottom line. Think of the bottom line as the focus each week. It helps us to connect God's word to our real life. Now, let's see what our friend has to say, and I'll see you after today's Bible lesson. Let's go. Hey, hey everybody, let's give God the praise, then hear a true story from the Bible that reminds us, trust God no matter what.
story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God made our amazing world, but sin entered the world. People turned away from God and went their own way. But then God picked one man, a guy named Abraham. And even though Abraham was like 90 years old and had no kids, God told him to look up. And God promised he would have more kids than stars in the sky. Yeah, and the entire world would be blessed through Abraham's family. And Abraham did have a kid, Isaac. Isaac just so happens to be the hero in our story. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Hey Erica. In today's story, Isaac was in search of water. Isaac and his family and herdsmen lived out on the plains in the land of the Philistines. And for them, water was life. If they didn't have access to a good, clean well, they couldn't survive. Fortunately, Isaac and his family had some really great wells. They had plenty to drink and their crops were growing well. Isaac seemed right on track to be living out the promises God gave his father, Abraham. Unfortunately, the Philistines who lived nearby and their king, Abimelech, became jealous of Isaac's success. They shoveled dirt into his wells and he didn't have water anymore. You have become too powerful. Move away from us. Isaac had plenty of men who could stand against the Philistines and fight. But instead of fighting, he decided to trust God to take care of him. So, Isaac chose to keep his cool. He and his family packed up everything they owned. They moved on and made camp in the Valley of Gerar, where Abraham had lived for a time, many years before. All right, man, let's open up those old wells my father dug. Abraham's old wells filled with cool, clear water once again. The happy herds and flocks could drink their fill. Things were great! Until the nearby Philistine herdsmen showed up to challenge Isaac's servants. Step aside! Your water's ours! You're gonna have to fight us for it! Whoa, whoa, easy does it, fellas. There's plenty of land in this valley for everyone. We'll move along. Again, Isaac could have fought back! But instead, he trusted. He and his family and his servants and flocks all moved camp down the valley. Once again, his servants set out to dig new wells. The new wells also produced clean, clear, cool water. But it wasn't long before the Philistine herders arrived on the scene to take over these new wells too. Yes, another day, another well for us. Take it down a notch, please. There's still room for everyone. But we could knock them flat. Yes, we could, but we're not going to. Move on out, boys. A third time, Isaac and his men moved camp, and Isaac's servants dug fresh wells once again. But this time, this time, Isaac was left in peace. In fact, King Abimelech himself showed up to make it official. Why have you come to me? You were angry with me and sent me away. We saw that the Lord was with you. Make a peace treaty with us. Give us your word that you won't harm us. Yeah, I can do that. Isaac prepared a feast for the Philistines. And early the next morning, the men made an agreement to keep peace with each other. Then, the Philistines went on their way. The end. Trusting in God takes faith. We hear God's word. We believe God's word. We speak God's word. And we do God's word. It says in John 3:16 that God loved us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, and whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. If you trust what it says in John 3:16 is true, then you can take a step of faith to become a part of God's family. It's as easy as A, B, C. Listen, A, admit that you sinned. B, believe Jesus died for our sins and is alive today. And C, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
Yes, I know. It's that simple. So if you want to get saved today, just repeat these words after me. Say, Dear God, I admit that I've sinned. I believe Jesus died for my sins and is alive today. And I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And it says in your word that I am saved. Thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, hey, look, I'm going to need y'all up at your seats because we just made the best decision of our lives. We got saved, y'all. We got saved. Now, listen, all I need y'all to do, families, parents, I need y'all to let us know that you made this decision. Just text Faith Chapel to 94 Zero, zero, zero. That's Faith Chapel to 94000. Just so that we can love on you just a little bit more and get a little bit more information to you. Okay? Well, look, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time. Let's go. Hello, families. Isn't it amazing how we can always trust God no matter what? One way to continue exploring how we can always trust God is through the Faith Chapel Kids Family Activity Guide. It is simple to download. Visit our Facebook parent group, our website at faithchapel.net slash kids, or follow it right from your phone. In the guide, you will find amazing activities that encourage growth through God's Word with your elementary kid. It helps you talk through today's Bible story, provides a thought-provoking activity to reflect on the story focus, guides you through prayer, and so much more. These amazing tools are available for you to use at any time. When you use them, you will be amazed at how quickly your elementary kid is learning and growing in their faith right at home with you. Remember, in addition to the wonderful on-demand service you're viewing right now, we have returned to in-person services for kids. Hooray! Please join us on either our Birmingham or Columbus campus. For more details about this in-person service on the campus you attend, special days when we worship together in the main sanctuary as a family, and more, please visit faithchapel.net slash family. We look forward to helping you grow in your relationship with God. Have a wonderful week.